Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to get an opportunity to talk about my dissertation research today. Um, and my dissertation is actually on a site that's located just outside the Maya area, um, but thanks. Um, is that, that any better? Um, on a site that's just outside the Maya area, uh, but my research relies heavily on, and I think it's very relevant to, archaeology of the ancient Maya. Um, and the site that I'm working on for my dissertation is um, uh, El Coyote, which is located in the Santa Barbara Department of Honduras. And the site consists of just over 400 structures uh, with several patio groups and complexes, including a centrally located main plaza group. Uh, it was occupied during the late and terminal classic periods. And it's noteworthy for its sort of sustained, oh man, that looks terrible, huh? Um, it's, it's, well, okay, it's noteworthy for its sustained viability in the terminal classic and for a copper production facility located in the southeastern portion of the site. Um, and there's really uh, nothing else like this that's been found in the region. It's really cool. Um, but my, my research focuses on sort of uh, um, a broader aspect of El Coyote's history and really how we build archaeological analogies in general. So Pat Urban and Ed Shortman have been directing excavations at El Coyote for over a decade. And they've excavated about 21% of the site's known structures um, using a uniform methodology. And the extensive coverage of this site provides an ideal circumstance to investigate social connectivity and groupings across an archaeological site. Uh, the differentia differentiation of social groups has been an interest of mine really since I started doing archaeological fieldwork as an undergraduate. Uh, and it's also been a focus of other archaeologists working throughout the world. Um, using material culture as a basis for differentiating between social groups goes back right a long time, really to the right, early essentialist thinkers of the 19th century, but modern archaeologists right, also recognize that social identity and material culture are produced in tandem as people inhabit various social roles. So the concept for my dissertation was to use this ample data we've collected at El Coyote to map various types of social groups across the site. And the, uh, the, cent the central conceptual problem that I ran into in developing this idea was regarding how best to connect material variables to specific social groups. Uh, for example, it might be interesting to note patterns in the way that ceramic paste varies across the site, but asserting that that pattern is indicative of the way that uh, uh, different uh, political ideologies, for example, are distributed requires another step in the interpretive process. So I'm fairly confident that certain material culture plays a transparent role in social differentiation. For example, I did a research project in which I argued that the presence of Naco Valley-style architectural forms in the Cacolapa Valley site of Las Canoas was an indicator that certain residents of Las Canoas had social ties to the Naco capital of La Sierra. And this is interesting, uh, but we know that the majority of social groupings don't have such clear material correlates. Uh, the times when archaeologists have meaningful intuition about what types of social differentiation a piece of material culture indexes are fewer and far between than we'd like. Um, and archaeologists are endowed with, um, and at times burdened by, right, an abundance of data. And these data no doubt mean something important about the people who created them, whether or not we have a sense for what that might be. Um, so in an effort to make some sense of some of these data, I tried an experiment at a smaller site near El Coyote. Um, and for this, for this project, I looked for correlations between a random assortment of material variables uh, and distance between structures. And the idea of this project was that similar types of people might cluster together, uh, and it would be interesting to see if the artifacts found at the structures at the site bore that out. And as it turned out, there was a significant relationship right, between distance between structures and the five classes of artifacts that I chose at random. And uh, again, this is interesting, uh, but it doesn't tell us a whole lot about the people who lived here. Right? The findings don't offer any uh, basis for the pattern or suggest any particular social groups that might be driving the clustering of similar artifact assemblages. So in other words, the results could be due to people with right, similar social status living closer together, the clustering of certain craft specializations, uh, or any number of other explanations. Right? We simply don't know because we haven't created any kind of meaningful uh, analogical thread that connects our findings right, to something else. Right. And this is sort of what the right, map looks like if the structures are color-coded based on the similarity of their artifact assemblages. Right. And again, these are uh, 
variables that were chosen right, randomly. And the benefit of randomly choosing material variables for an, an analysis like this is that you remove the bias associated with selecting them. And there's a lot of really interesting research that shows that even when methods are otherwise sound, there's a lot of room for researchers to influence findings by handpicking variables. So by picking randomly, we can better eliminate personal bias, but we might be left with situations like this, where, right, where we have an interesting phenomenon and no real explanation. So what I wanted to do for my dissertation research was to find a balance between randomness and handpicking. Right? Hopefully something that removed as much of my own personal bias as possible while still facilitating meaningful interpretations of the data. And what I settled on is doing a systematic literature review and metadata analysis. And this is a common approach in a lot of other fields, but to my knowledge has never been used in archaeology. Uh, right? While literature reviews are common in the field, systematic literature reviews um, are a technique generally more popular in health-related fields, where it's very important to aggregate research and to find common ground. And the goal of any lit review is to describe the current state of research and understanding within an area of interest, usually to help situate a new research project within it. Um, uh, and systematic literature reviews don't really differ from that, or in, differ in that respect. Um, uh, what they do is they aim to accomplish the same goals through a modified methodology that produces a thorough summary of previous research and uses transparent and repeatable methods. And the value of this methodology lies in its ability to summarize large quantities of information and to reduce the effect of researchers' beliefs on results. However, since archaeology is a destructive science, um, the need to reach consensus is fundamentally different from that of the hard sciences and other social sciences. Right, Meta-analyses frequently average the results of multiple investigations on the same topic, but archaeological research is inherently non-repeatable, which makes comparisons of different studies with uh, identical research goals impossible. However, many archaeologists undertake projects with similar aims, even if the setting and the specific data sets are different. And it's my assertion that even under these unique circumstances, there's tremendous value to undertaking a systematic literature review and metadata analysis. So in this case, my goal isn't to find a statistical average uh, uh, within archaeological analyses. Rather, I'm aiming to establish a, a consensus regarding which material signatures typically index social group membership in Mesoamerican archaeology. And my systematic literature review accomplishes this goal by summarizing previous research in a comprehensive way, limiting bias, and accommodating many competing ideas and narratives about the past. So for this review, I aim to conduct a comprehensive research for articles in which archaeologists attempted to differentiate between two groups of people based on material culture. And the criteria I used for inclusion in the review were that social group membership of some sort had to be the dependent variable in the archaeological analysis with independent variables that were a type of material culture. And I should say that these classes of artifacts aren't true independent variables in the sense of most statistical research uh, because of archaeologists' inability to control their properties and to repeat experiments. So I use the term to denote that these objects are the inputs with which archaeologists have determined group affiliation. Uh, additionally, the social groups had to be contemporaneous and inhabiting the same area. Um, right? So merely delineating physical boundaries between groups uh, or polities was insufficient. Um, I restricted the search to articles published in or after 1990, and although I noted studies from any area of the world and time period, I limited my formal analysis to studies of Mesoamerica and Central Mexico in the classic and post-classic periods. So my search strategy began with searches in major archaeological journals for the terms identity and social group. Um, and articles were then selected manually based on title and abstract. Uh, following that, I reviewed the references for the selected articles and found more relevant publications through the snowball method in which uh, bibliographies are used to chain relevant publications together. Uh, so the studies that are relevant to my dissertation uh, attempt to differentiate between a wide variety of social groups based on an even wider variety of material variables. And the types of differentiation include social class, regional affiliation, political groups, and, and others. Uh, and they differentiate between those groups right, using material variables that include architectural style, architectural layout, ceramic vessel form, ceramic vessel decoration, right, and the list goes on. Um, and while none of these variables are surprising in and of themselves, the patterns they reveal about how material variables indicate social group membership will facilitate future analyses. Aside from the obvious argument that certain things have been done before, the larger patterns establish precedent regarding which variables are typically linked to which facets of identity. 
For example, archaeologists have uh, almost exclusively used osteological remains to establish birthplace. However, regional affiliations are generally analyzed using artifact style. And I hope that the sum of these relationships will create a powerful and customizable tool for finding and analyzing identity in future and other archaeological contexts as well. So the results of my literature review right, are sort of summarized here. And what you're looking at are the types of social groups that archaeologists have differentiated between in Mesoamerica, and then the types of material remains that have been used to differentiate between those groups. Right. So on top we have class, right? social class, which has been uh, right, differentiated based on architectural style, burial practices, and ceramic vessel form right? in, in that order of uh, frequency. Right? And for this particular example, there's more than just three. Um, these are just the top three. Right? And then for political affiliation, right, we have architectural layout, ceramic vessel form, burial practices, and ceramic vessel decoration. Uh, and these material variables are all ranked based on the frequency with which they've been used by archaeologists in the past. Right? And then going down the list, right, we have regional affiliation, descent groups, birthplace, occupation, occupation and religion. Right? Each listed with the main indicators that archaeologists have used to identify them. So how does this information get us closer to understanding social groupings at El Coyote or at other archaeological sites? Well, I said earlier that we needed to find a way to develop analogical threads that balances the lack of bias uh, of randomness with meaningful explanatory power. Um, and I think this gets us there, gets us closer to it. Right. Um, what we have is a series of social groups uh, and a ranking of variables that Mesoamerican archaeologists have used to differentiate between groups within them. Right. Of course, this approach won't simply provide the answer to all of my questions about El Coyote. There's still lots of interpretation to be done in this project, and there's simply no way to effectively remove all personal bias, even if I'd like to. Uh, in addition, it's worth mentioning that each situation is unique, right? and none of the other studies that I'm using for, uh, as the basis for this project are ideal correlates for El Coyote. All right? the project, uh, this project creates a jumping off point, but I'll still need to evaluate the, the findings subsequently. Still, from this foundation, I can create a customizable mapping tool in GIS that I can use to make maps that look similar to what I showed earlier from my pilot project, except that uh, those produced using this information will have much greater explanatory power. And by weighting d uh, different material variables according to these findings, we can hopefully minimize personal bias without losing direction. Thank you very much. <laughs>